Hey everyone, this is Everyone Loves Pirates, and today I'm going to introduce you to a game called Clockwork Empires. So this is a game that I've been watching for a long time. I got on the developer's email list. Um, I've been really excited about this game. And this game uh, is made by the guys that made Dungeons & Dreadmore, Gaslamp Games. And if you don't know Dungeons & Dreadmore, it's a really great dungeon crawler roguelike. It's really, in my opinion, it's the first kind of of these new, easily accessible roguelikes, especially dungeon crawlers that came out that really captured everyone's attention, uh, became very popular, and really, if you ask me, it it, it helped kickstart this this renewed, refound desire to play these roguelikes, especially dungeon crawler games. So, uh, really, it's been great for the genre, and it's a really great game, really funny. Uh, they they just they're given all sorts of free updates to the game after they released it. Um, and added so much to it so I really love them as the developer I think they're they're really great and this is the game they've been working on since then so I do apologize I meant to get uh, this first look video out uh, at the beginning of this week uh, but I had some issues this is a very very early access build of the game it's called earliest access and uh, because of that it's really it's it's in a state where they're trying to clean up the bugs and stuff and get it ready for steam early access so it will be available on steam the plan is August 15th uh, for $29.95 so you know that's probably only gonna be a few days after I get this video published assuming this one works out for me but I had some issues with sound because you can't change the sound levels in the game and my recording software and then you know I had a couple you know crashes and you know bugs that just kinda made it where I was like ah, I can't do this one so I do apologize that I didn't get this out earlier but in the bright side I wouldn't recommend really buying into earliest access anyways same price um, wait until they get most of the big bugs worked out and it's on steam for early access if you are interested but uh let's get started so this game really unlike uh you know the roguelike dungeon call they did before uh, dungeons of dreadmore this is more in the vein of dwarf fortress and really to be honest it's very very much so in the vein of dwarf fortress and even here as we start the game it kind of looks like you know way you start Dwarf Fortress. You got your mountain homes here and this is where the colony is going to be and you know they may send you uh, migrants and uh, supplies and caravans and stuff like that. Here they're called colonists and uh, airdrops and stuff but basically what you are is you're going to have this colony uh, as part of the empire and you're going to have these colonists that you're taking care of much like the dwarfs in Dwarf Fortress and you're going to tell them to do stuff and they may or may not do that based uh, you know or at least quickly based on their uh, their traits and their characteristics and stuff like that. This game, unlike a lot of the other Dwarf Fortress clones, if you will, uh, has the potential to have a very similar depth to Dwarf Fortress. And already it starts with a lot more depth than any other Dwarf Fortress clone I've played. So, but at the same time, it's not a clone. I don't want you guys to be turned off and be like, oh, it's just another clone of Dwarf Fortress was with like this Britain skin on top of it. No, it's it really has its own unique kind of just theme and idea and identity so yes you're you're part of this like neo-british not even maybe even neo because that says you know it's almost like an alternate history so it's very steampunky kind of alternate history thing but at the same time yes you are like part of this empire it's not necessarily britannia you got this cog in the middle but it, it does definitely have those those sorts of uh, themes. It's got the colors, it's got the outfits, it's got all that kind of stuff and the, the words and all that. But at the same time, you have this undercurrent of this like horror kind of genre stuff. So you have like these eldritch horrors they call them, and you know it's kind of Lovecraftian. You got like here, as you can see, other notes about where we're going. You have rumors of fish people, um, and at the same time, you know you got this kind of cool alternate history thing where there's dodos walking about, and you got the steampunk going on. So. Um, really, if you read up on the devlogs and stuff like that, to me it's going to be a very unique game. Um, it's going to play in a similar vein to Dwarf Fortress, but it's going to be its own unique kind of game, and I would hesitate to call it a Dwarf Fortress clone. But let's, once again, get started, and we can talk about more of this as the game is loading up. But right now, all this is just going to be the same every time I start in the earliest access, because, once again, they're trying to just make sure that the core game is running well and ready and available for Steam access. So. Uh, we're going to be Colony of New Antipoda, and we're going to be Cogs Bronze, the bureaucrat name. And the biomes here at the at the new colony are going to be Aspen Forest, Grassland, High Prairie, Conifer Forest. We're going to have Wildlife of Dodo and Aurox. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, basically, they're like really large uh, cows. Uh, if you've ever been to Scotland or you know about them or you just want to run a Google image search really quick because they're super cool animals. Uh, hairy cows. They're awesome. Highlands of Scotland. 
they call them Herikus. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh, other notes, it's rich in timber minerals, rumors of fish people, as we said, and the loadout is going to be 14 enterprising colonists, three brave soldiers, and the sundry supplies as befits an expedition of our size. So let's get started. Now, as this loads, I will mention that my computer actually does not meet the minimum recommended specs for the game. So if you see any slowdowns or anything like that, uh, one, the game is not optimized yet at all. And two, um, I'm playing it on lower hardware, uh, also while recording and um, encoding at the exact same time. So I'm really kind of pushing my computer to the edge. Now, as this starts up, we're going to see our colonists. We're going to see uh, the our supplies and stuff like that. And we're going to see just a little uh, area that we can see through the fog of war. And as people walk around, that'll disperse. But let's uh, let's pause the game real quick. I'm not going to try to spend too much time pause, but I do want to explain in what ways this does have the depth of Dwarf Fortress. Even in its current state, it's already, you know, kind of has some of the same ideas. So let's look at some of these people that are talking. we got two soldiers here. And we can mouse over them, see their name, their job, and stuff like that. But if we click on them, we can see even more. So this is an NCO, uh, a part of Her Majesty's 100th Line Infantry, and she's currently gossiping. Her traits are an inordinate fondness for beetles. She has a great love for beetles, collecting, categorizing, making little beetle hats, etc. Uh, I like the writing. Once again, uh, Dungeons & Dreadmore had... I just I love the humor in that. You see a lot of that uh, shining through in this as well. She's organized. What ho! This person is very good at getting things done and organizing people. Very good because uh, she's a commanding officer. She's spiritually inclined. She's a pious individual, pleased to fall in devotional worship of the Holy Cog or anybody else uh, interesting who might be in town. So she may fall in with this uh, kind of cult option that you see in the game. She's had a conversation about the monarchy lately, and she bid a fond farewell to loved ones before joining the colony. It's going to be an adventure of a lifetime. So we also have, besides these traits and memories, we have uh, this background as well. So Vesta Iron Whistle, great name, came to the colonies due to losing a wager. <laughs> so she lost a bet. Um, every time I read one of these, I seem to read a new one. They've put so much detail already into the game, even in its early state, just in like flavor text. Um, she worships at the altar of the Celestial Order. Everyone kind of starts that way. Uh, she pledged allegiance to the Queen. And she is a sturdy subject that has one of those faces you just keep seeing everywhere. That's kind of an inside joke is where they don't have a whole lot of variety in faces right now. Uh, now if we look at the person that she uh, was talking to, it's a foot soldier. Also in the same inventory because there's only one right now. And her traits are she's easily influenced. She's more likely to listen to people. Um, be they the real people or simply strange whispering voices they keep hearing inside their head. Um, she's of a criminal element, more likely to tend to violence, less likely to cater to authority, more likely to steal things than usual, so maybe not the best soldier. She also has the memory of an, being airsick during the entire airship journey over here to the frontier. She came to the colonies from losing a wager. Okay, now that I say that, we get two in the row, which is the first time I've ever had uh, that ever. Um, so let's look at like this guy. He was also sick. He came to the colonies due to... Oh, come on! You're making me look like an idiot here. Okay, she came to the colonies to get away from the bustle of the capital. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I've never... I didn't ever see that before, and then I see it three times in a row. After I praise the game for doing different things. And now we're going to get all sorts of... Like, literally, before, I could go through and click on every single person. They had a different reason for coming here. Okay, so he came seeking to build a new life on the frontier. Now he has a memory of, he had an unpleasant journey due to haunting dreams by mysterious dark figures. Uh, he's also adaptable, he requires new skills faster than others. He's brutish, he tends to solve problems by hitting them, and he's romantically inclined. Um, you there. So he eagerly joined the colony to flee from an unspeakable criminal record, I mean... There's, there's actually quite a few funny ones. You see her seek wealth and fortune. Apparently, we're not going to find any of those on this playthrough. Uh, yeah, because either I'm clicking on the same people or they all have the same thing. She came to promote the ideas of ethics and science. Uh, she also had some crazy things she saw. She's a laudanum fiend. Um, and she's lazy. So you do have that kind of concept of laziness. Or even there's drunker. There's just people who are, you know, craven or absent-minded. And that's going to determine... When you tell them to do stuff, how well or how soon or whether maybe possibly at all they do those things. So with that in mind, let's kind of start looking at how you designate things. So let's um, select all these trees. So we can select like one tree at a time if we wanted to and go down to chop down trees. Or one of the nice UI things, just draw a big square around it. You can see 
for everything you drew a square around, you can see what you can do. So we chop them all down. We could clear the terrain. We could forage. So apparently there's some like mushrooms or something in there. We can mine surface nodes. So apparently there's some um, ore in there. Or we can nurture saplings, like make that little sapling grow into a nice big tree. Uh, for now, let's just chop down the trees because we'll need that. We also want to start building things as well because we really need a carpentry workshop so that we can get planks because we only start with a few and if we don't make a carpentry workshop we are kind of in trouble so um you know what the heck let's just throw it um let's throw it here i'm gonna do what is that five no, let's just do five by five and actually since i kind of know what's next the kind of cool thing is you can draw a square but you can also add on to it like in any design you want so you can make any shape houses you want and the game will do its best <laughs> And sometimes it has some issues, but putting a roof on that shape of a house. Uh, so let's, uh, we hit done after we've made kind of like the floor plan. And there we have to put in our modules. And there are some required modules for each type of workshop and whatnot. For the carpentry one, we need a door. In fact, every building needs a door. Hint, hint. We also need a carpentry workbench, and we need a standing desk. So I know that I, that what size those things kind of are. So I just kind of made a little notch for them anyways there and let's not forget the door because that is important and we have optional modules stuff like a power saw probably cuts wood faster would be my guess a loading bay door get bigger things in and out perhaps um, never really seen it in use haven't really messed with it all that much uh, at the beginning it doesn't really matter all that much you also have decorations maybe make people happier while they're in their home or workshop or whatever provide lamps provide light and as you add things to the building, you see the construction requirements in order to make those things. And we hit done when we're finished, and that'll be put there, and it will be designated to be built. So how does that work? We asked for some things to be chopped down. I'm going to unpause the game now that we have some things going. And we asked for, some, for a workshop to be built. So the people who are idling will talk, and that's one of the cool things too, is they share their memories. So they talk about the monarch and stuff, the monarchy, and if you have someone who sees something horrible happen, they'll tell it to somebody else who may tell it to somebody else. You get this really cool kind of depth that you see in Dwarf Fortress where you can get people making other people angry or making them depressed or, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm really excited about that in this game and that's one of the reasons why I think this game is going to be really cool. Now, we see them building stuff and chopping out trees. In Dwarf Fortress, that would the way that would happen is uh, just any dwarf who had that labor enabled would go and start working on it. The first one that would do it would do it, and no one else would really be able to help. In this game, they've done a really unique thing with these work crews, and I, I really like this, and I think it's a really good way to do it. So you have laborers and you have overseers. And basically what happens is when you make a job, an overseer takes up that job. So like for constructing that. So if we go down here, we can see that uh, Mr. M Millard Golden Willock uh, this overseer has decided that he's going to take up the job of constructing the building. So him and his crew, the laborers underneath him, these people, have come over here. You can see one of them right there, right? Hobart. Hobart. Uh, will come and do that job. Well, let's say these guys aren't doing anything and I want I want to prioritize that. Well, I can take someone from her work crew and put it over here and that person will come and do it, you know, and help out. So I think that's a really kind of cool way to designate things to be done and kind of work with prioritizing. Now, um, once a workshop is complete, a overseer will take over that workshop, much like in Dwarf Fortress. But once again, whoever's underneath them, their laborers, their crew, will work with them in that workshop. And you have buttons down here for each type of kind of job. So you can tell someone maybe once, um, for instance, excuse me, you make a kitchen, you may want to prioritize in making food like all the time. So you may put a couple ovens in there and put a couple people on that work crew. But then you might want to tell them, hey, I want to disable all other jobs except for your workshop job here so that the only thing they ever do besides idling is cook so they won't stop cooking to run across the map to haul something so I think that's a really really neat way of doing it and actually your military works the same way they're just another another uh, work crew down here so that's kind of neat you see some people with no jobs you see some people chopping down trees if I want to make sure all these trees get chopped down and we have uh, see and two people can take up the same kind of job unless it's like a, a workshop kind of deal but um, you know I can say hey you know you guys are chopping down trees uh, this guy's doing nothing um, I can just move that worker down there make sure we have four people chopping trees now and overseers, overseers will work as well, not necessarily as much. Like over here, the work, overseer is going to be doing paperwork and stuff. 
So I'll unpause that. You can also get jobs here and just kind of see what's being done and by whom. You can look at colonists and see what each individual person is actually doing. And you look at commodities to see what sort of commodities you have. Now, here's another interesting thing. You can see I've done these videos quite a few times <laughs> because uh, luckily that'll make for a nice and dense video. But we have some some coups here, some hairy coups. So we can take, let's say, okay, they're constructing that standing desk. That's fine. Let's find someone without a job. So here's just two people, no job. Everyone has hunting disabled to start with. So I'm just going to enable hunting for them. So I know I have a couple extra guns. They'll run over, grab the guns, and they will shoot any animal that comes within their range. They won't actually go actively out and hunt, but um, they'll do that. And we can also take our military while we have things going on, and we can use these rally points to send them places. There's also patrol, um, and this is just like spawn a steam knight into the game. Uh, but they're kind of just developer things right now. They don't work all that well. Uh, I'm not going to use them at the risk of actually kind of um, destroying the game. But as you can see, they killed a cow and someone came over and butchered it immediately, which is awesome. Now this guy, he's running over. He's going to go to the rally point. And what I'm just trying to do is get rid of some of this fog of war because there are bad things in this game. And I want to make sure that, they, um, that I have a chance to see them before they get right on top of my colony. So I'm going to run him around. Unfortunately, at this point in the game right now, the rally points kind of stick around. They always go to the next rally point, um, but it kind of clutters up the landscape there. It's just it's just an alpha thing. They just don't delete themselves after you set the next one. I can go by individually and get rid of each one, but that's kind of a pain as well. So I just want to kind of deal with the, um, with the fog of war right now. Now we can see that someone's claimed a workshop, which is good. And uh, let's see. Now I'm going to set the next rally point once they kind of get close to that one. Kind of that way they can clear a lot of fog of war. And then we'll come over here and deal with this. So we click on the building itself, not the workbench. I had that issue for a while, not figuring out why I couldn't get anything to work. And we're going to queue up making like 10 planks. we got plenty of wood here, so they should have materials to make the planks. And that's how you do that. Now I am going to pause real quick, and let's get a... Um, Let's get the next building going because I think uh, something that's very important to have is a kitchen. So, um, and I want plenty of room for crops around the kitchen. Let's build a kitchen here. Something like that. I think five is enough. And then we will go done, place modules. So I want an oven. I may end up making like a whole row of ovens so they can make a whole lot of food, but for now one should probably be sufficient. And I can right click and rotate things around. I'm going to put a workbench in the corner there. And we do need a door as well. And, um, you know, these are optional modules, like a, a better probably stove, a steam oven versus a small oven. But, um, you know, let's build the spice racks. They only, it only costs um, one plank. And I mean, really, you know, I cook, I like to cook. And can you imagine cooking without spices and pots? I can't. But anyways, I don't know what those do. Maybe it makes for better food, happier people because they eat better food, or maybe it takes care of hunger better. Can't tell you, don't know. But there you go. Still very early in the game. Okay. So I'm going to continue uh, as people work on that, just kind of rallying our troops around. Now we got the beach down here. We can go check that out. I mean, if there were to be fish people anywhere, you would think it'd be there, right? I guarantee you, we will see some fish people by the end of this video. This video will probably be about 30 minutes long because there are quite a lot of things to show you guys, even in its current state, and I want to make sure that I do show you some of the cool stuff. So here's a uh, fish person. When the military gets close enough to one, they just kill it because, yeah. Why not? They're different from us. Let's kill them. Uh, of course, had we not sent the military out there and the fish person came to us, they would have also attacked us. But, you know, hey, they were here first. Now you also see these um, these clutch of caviar, exotic caviar clutch. Um, now you got to think caviar is obviously fish eggs. They are probably fish people eggs, um, which is kind of interesting. But we can collect them and we can eat them, and we will. And they finished the uh, the outside of the kitchen. Come on, guys, I rallied you, didn't I? There you go. Let's get rid of the rest of the fog of war. Finally, some berries, man. Not a whole heck of a lot of berries around here. And that's going to be enough for me for now. I'm just going to rally them to the middle so they can protect the colony should more people come. Uh, let's get this butchered over here. And now the interesting thing is these bones can be used to make bone meal. 
and bone meal can be used to help with crops and we will have some crops so I'm a forage bone meal as well and let's look at something else that's kind of door fortressy so I'm gonna turn this around a little bit and we are going to designate a stockpile I'm going to designate stockpile in front of the kitchen for foodstuffs so we can click on that we can disable everything except for food see much easier UI not as I always say depth but you know not as specific like in door forges you can take it down to like you know just chairs made out of a specific type of stone but uh, you know for the purposes of this game uh, that should be plenty good enough and we could also put like a stockpile in front of uh, this in order to um, give them the raw goods but pretty much there's a lot of wood nearby anyway so I won't really worry about that right now we also want a farm because now we have uh, something that will use the stuff we grow so I'm gonna build probably should put like a door out the back or something I should have put the farms in front um, let's let's build the farms here so I'm gonna make that one wheat Build another one. Uh, let's spin back around again. Right next to it. Make that cabbage. Now I might need to clear these. Let's mine that. And clear terrain. Oh, well, I think I got rid of mining now. Oh well, no big worries. It wasn't much. Um, now, I also kind of want more wheat because you know obviously we can be made into bread we can also be made into beer and I'd love to get a, uh, a brewery still going soon brewery for beer still for liquor and you know you really can't have too much food either if you ask me so I've never done this many farms before this might be an overkill um, but yeah we got wheat and everything except for the cabbage one you also have the option of like opium poppies, which makes heroin or morphine or, you know, whatever you want to call it, drugs, um, for med medicinal purposes only, of course. Okay, let's keep, keep going. Keep the game moving. So, good. Actually, let's forge here if we're not already doing it. kind of looks like we are. Yeah, we are. Get some of those mushrooms and stuff going. Now, even though they can't cook anything yet, we can queue some stuff up. So we can like tell them to cook a bunch of steaks once once they're ready. So we'll do that as well. Hey, end of first day. Awesome. Now you'll see, obviously, that overseers claim workshops, which means that their work crews work on those workshops. But let's say you had a, as many workshops as you had overseers. Then you'd have overseers that wouldn't have anything else to do or they'd have to split their time between the workshop and like cutting down trees or something like that so you do need to be careful I think about how quickly that you expand because uh, you wanna you don't we don't have a whole lot of colonists right now now soon I believe during the second day probably sometime we'll get the option to get some migrants and I definitely want to show you that and if possible uh, if we got the time I'd like to show you a supply drop as well but for now you know we'll just get this kind of stuff going I might get some people sleeping on the ground or something out here at night. Uh, they may go inside and sleep as well. That's, man, that lady was dancing. Ted dancing. She's been thinking about uh, the daily grind and she fears airship travel. Oh, so this, she joined the colonies to escape the affection of the poet laureate. See? It's different stuff. I think it's funny. Mushroom lover. She greatly enjoys mushrooms and fungi, especially when they offer interesting opportunities. <laughs> and she has fishy behavior. This individual has become obsessed with the water, the sea, the fish, and all things aquatic. They often contemplate taking long walks directly into the ocean. Mm. Then they turn into a fish person. Oh no. I have no idea, actually. Um, now we also have stuff like clay here, so we can make bricks. And we have all sorts of uh, boulders that we can get stone from. Coal over here. It's a type of fuel. Uh, this guy, let's uh, butcher, forge some of this stuff. It's dangerously close to the fog of war, but you know they can run away should a fish person come. Hopefully. So yeah, my thoughts about the game. I, like I said, I'm really excited by, by this game. I think it has a whole heck of a lot of uh, potential and opportunities to to make something really special. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. So someone was eating a steak. Raw, I think. And in fact, we're actually pretty low on food, it looks like. I see... Now, there's some steaks there. 
But um, yeah, it, it, like I say, I would hesitate to call it a Dwarf Fortress clone. I think it's in the vein of Dwarf Fortress. It's inspired by Dwarf Fortress. But, you know, it really has its own sort of uh, niche. It has its own ideas, and it uses, you know, the idea of the depth of Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress, you know, coming by first and saying, hey, this can be done. You can have super amount of depth, and people will enjoy that, even, um, even if they have to give up prettiness to do it. So this is getting a good mix of those things. But I am excited about the story, the whole concept of, you know, these undercurrents of society and people talking about things and uh, spreading ideas and secret societies popping up and, you know, murderers and, you know, all sorts of kind of interesting stuff that happens. I mean, it's kind of like, once again, Dwarf Fortress kind of idea of, you know, hey, you get strange moods and if they can't, you know, alleviate those moods and they can't make the thing they want to make, then they go crazy and or someone's cat dies and they go crazy. And OK, so here we go. We have immigration. So we have the option here. We can tell them to go away. We don't need any immigrants. And that's basically saying, hey, we can't feed any more mouse get out of here so we lose prestige with the empire the empire is like hey we want to send people to you that's the whole point of a colony so if we may be aligned to our own interests and say no screw you uh we're we're america you know we're doing our own thing now or you can ask for skilled overseers that's one more person that can run a workshop or a work group now unfortunately we don't have enough people to do another overseer so we'll take three of anything you got and that gives us prestige once again saying hey um our colony is doing good. Well, we can take however many people you want to send us because we are awesome. Now let's look at our work crews. Immigrants have arrived. Uh, if they were just laborers, they'd show up here. They'd be unassigned, but it's the unassigned workers. But apparently we didn't get any of those. So I don't know what we got. We get artisans? Have they not shown up in the list yet? Eh, can't tell you. I'll check it out again later. But um, that's how immigration works. You can kind of choose how you want things to come instead of just a bunch of migrants showing up in Door Fortress with their little babies and stuff. Who are you? Smugly Rivet. Okay, see, he has to be new. He's a capitalist, uh, no work crew. He's idle. He's a drunk. He's a professional. Professional drunk. He's Dean Martin. Uh, he's a recluse and uh, most dangerous of all spider capitalists. And he enjoyed the journey to the frontier. What a view. So he was sent to the colonies by disapproving parents. He's he's a capitalist, um, like business dude, and his parents are like eighty and like, hey, Shani, you get out of here. I disapprove of you. Go to the colony. Uh, sorry again for that. And uh, yeah, so he's probably just useless. Now you do have other buildings. I'll kind of go over what they do. Ceramics make bricks. Am I paused? I am. Sorry about that. A refinery turns ore into like metals. Metals can be used in the metal works to um, to make items out of metal. And we have houses that we could build. We don't really have the materials right now to be doing that. But uh, you also have an arsenal, the brewery, which I like to get up, and the chemist shop. So you know, someone like him would probably want an upper class house. He's gonna just stand there and dance all day. Da, 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 da. Um, so that's one of those things. Ending of day two. I'm hoping we'll get a supply drop option as well pretty soon. Uh, let's forge some stuff. Nurture saplings if we want more trees in this area. Um, really, how are we doing? We got tons of logs here, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, we haven't made all of our stakes yet, but let's queue up uh, like some berries. I know we got berries available to us. Um, the cabbages will come in at some point, so we can do some cabbages and maybe some bread or something like that. You see them on the list. But it takes a while. You want to get your farms up pretty quick because it does take a while to get uh, those those crops growing. And I don't really know if there's a way to... Uh, no. I, we have some of this bone meal, but I don't really know if there's a way to make it happen right now. Maybe it's not even used, or maybe they just automatically use it when they when they need to. All right, so now we can request supplies. So we can ask for food. Uh, well, I'm going to read this because I like it. Owing to our standing as... Should I try my British voice for this? <clears throat> or my posh, you know. <clears throat> Owing to our standing assumption that your supplies have been squandered, the colonial ministry has seen fit to have a passing airship drop off some goods. What do you need? What, what, cheerio? So, um, <laughs> sorry. Food to feed my colonists. Guns, lots of guns, materials to build workshops, or nothing things will manage. As you see, we get positive prestige for this. So, hey, we're doing so well in our colony that we don't need anything from you guys. Uh, you were right to put me in charge because uh, I'm doing pretty darn good here. And to be honest, um, that's pretty much where we're at, I think. 
Uh, food might not be all that horrible, but or materials to build more workshops. Let's actually let's do that because we already got a tiny bit of prestige, and I don't really think it does a whole lot right now. So maybe I don't know what it brought us, um, but what I was thinking is maybe it'll give us the commodities we need to build the brewery, and we can kind of end with that because I haven't done that yet. I really would like to. Oop! I hit finish like right away. Okay, so I'm gonna build it here next to these crops. Actually, let's build it here. I really don't know how big to build this. What is that? 8 by 5? 8 by 6? Yeah, sure. Why not? So it's going to take 4 logs. That's not too bad. we got tons of logs. So we need a uh, door. Of course. Actually, I always like doing the door last. We need a still, so this is going to pop out somewhere. Yeah. Oh, actually, let's have it pop out like over here. And then we need a mixing tank. Probably put it near the still somewhere. Yeah, let's just put it there. And a door. A door over here, like in the corner. And what the heck, let's put a loading bay door, maybe get this stuff in quicker. Um, might just smack in the middle over here. Yeah, why not? Done. So they can build those. Mm, fish people. So here come the, uh, the army. Oh, dead fish person. Unfortunately, we can't butcher him or anything and make those nice fish people steaks that you see right there. You know, once again, something that just hasn't been added yet, but is obviously planned. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, you know, just kind of talking about my impressions of the game. I, I'm really excited, and I think it's going to be really cool. Now, you know, this whole early access thing, um, one, I would obviously recommend, uh, I, I think I mentioned, just, you know, wait for the, the Steam early access at this point, because it's only going to be a few days away by the time this video goes up. And the other thing is, um, you know, with early access, just kind of, if I didn't mention before, I kind of forget, since I've done so many of these videos now for various reasons, you know, just don't don't buy into something until you're sure that you like it in its current state, is all I'm saying. Um, let's click on this house and kind of see what we can make. Brew beer or distill whiskey? Now, I mean, whiskey's made from grains as well. It's basically the whole beer brewing process um, up to the point of, you know, then you distill it. Uh, but let's just start with beer. I think that'll probably be quicker, would be my guess. Ten beers. Nah, nah, nah. Can't do that, right? Everyone knows beers comes in uh, dozens. Dozen beers. Okay, they come in six packs. Or 12 packs, or like 24 packs. It's got to be a multiple of six. The Germans started that way back in the day. Everything must be six. That was not German at all. But that's probably good. I don't want to make the Germans mad at me. <laughs> Actually, I love Germans. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time in Germany and enjoyed it quite a bit. German ladies are very, very attractive as well. Just in case you didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, this video is, you know, I don't want to go too much further than that. I was kind of hoping we at least get some beer made. Let, I'm going to make that the goal. As soon as we get the beer made, uh, we'll be done. And in fact, I can kind of look at the work crews and see uh, what's going on. Okay, who's working on the still? You are. There you go. Of course, the still is for whiskey. I need probably the mixing tank. So now they have, she has no one working under her. Um, I can't tell what they're doing. No job. Okay. That's cut off on my screen as well, by the way. I'm running at 720p just because my computer is weak. Work. Okay, so actually this guy, which one was that? Her? Yeah. So she had a conversation about the necessity of committing the act of murder. Which, I don't know, might scare that guy. Conversation about something strange you heard about lately. Conversation about being very tired lately. He's an Epicurean. He enjoys the finer things in food and drink. Glutton, don't be so gosh. Um, recluse, a bee fancier. He revels in the company of bees and enjoys consuming products made from, by, and with bees. Not just honey. He likes like little hats made out of bee legs and stuff. Oh, all these idlers. They're as lazy as dwarfs. As dwarfs. Okay, Miss King Tank is done. He's going to dance a little dance because he's done. 
Admire fine machinery. So that's the admire dance. All right, this is done. Someone claim it. Oh, more immigrants. Okay. Um, I'm going to take three of anyone you got. So you, I saw the number go up. Let's check our work crews. Still, I don't know who we're getting. We might be getting just a ton of capitalists. Artisans? I don't see any. More military? Oh, they're all military this time. Now, one thing that would be nice is if I could like split them off. Make one into a overseer. But I don't think that's a possibility yet. Oh. I mean, I guess we could just add her to a work crew or something, too. But, no, you can stay there. Uh, we got So now we have cult activity. Enough people have been talking about bad things, too. Oh, we don't have any wheat yet. That's why we can't make any darn beer. Um, some of our cults have developed an interest in forbidden knowledge. So the cult may end up happening. Now, you know, stuff like the people who have murderous inclinations or cultish desires and stuff like that, you know, one of the options you can do, like right now the only option you could pretty much do, is click on Mark for Frontier Justice. And that'll basically just send the uh, the military over to go, oh, what, what, you know, stand there. I'm going to put this gun on your face and kill you. Oh, man, I should stop doing voices. So, uh, yeah, they just marks them and the military goes over and murders them. So, Capitalist is just going to dance in the doorway so people can't get by. Someone's going to sleep on the ground in there. Um, unfortunately, I think it's going to take too long for the wheat to grow. I should have started that earlier. And this video is getting much, much too long. But uh, once again, uh, this will be available on August 15th. At least that's the plan for $29.99 USD. And um, I will do another video when the probably immediately like it'll come out like the next day once it's released on steam early access to show you the differences see what uh what's been added to the game and hopefully a save is an option because basically i'm going to lose this as soon as i quit out of it but uh, I, I assume that's something they're going to have to do for steam early access so once again i expect the game to change um a decent amount a pretty decent leap in between this earliest access to get it ready for steam and actually when it does pop on steam so, uh, you know, I would recommend holding off, watch um, watch that video when it comes out or, you know, someone else or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be me. But um, the reason why I made this video was basically to, to get the word out, to put this on people's uh, kind of watch list and, you know, just just know it exists and know what, what you know, it the potential that it has and just keep an eye on it because I really think this is going to be a huge game uh, that's going to become quite popular and that people are really going to enjoy um, because yeah, people have just been itching for something kind of in the vein of Dwarf Fortress that's unique and um, pretty and a nice UI. And I think this is going to hit, um, hit, hit, hit the nail on the head on all those different categories. So we do have a little wheat being taken here, um, or at least to the stockpile. Let's see if we can get one bottle of beer made. I think they're going to bring it in, bring in the wheat. Come on, here comes the wheat. Let's let's uh, let's check this out. Now we can also click up here and like toggle and like where you can look inside all the houses and stuff too. So he's brewing beer. Good, we did get to end with this. Miller Golden Wilka, Willaka, be the German way of saying it. Golden Wilka. There we go. He's got beer. He's carrying beer. We can look at our commodities. Probably one bottle of beer, one jar of beer. That's amazing. I'm sure someone's already grabbed. Nope, no one's grabbed it yet. Let's see who who's gonna grab it first and drink it. Shows us everything in the stockpile. Really? No one's gonna go for that beer? I'm gonna go for that beer. Hope it's a stout or a porter. Smoked porter. Mm. By the way. If you're under 21, beer is a horrible, horrible thing. As soon as you turn 21, it becomes a great thing. In moderation. Uh, so thanks for watching, folks. Uh, the kind of standard uh, outro applies here. If you like what you've seen, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your input on these sorts of things. I love how things stack in here, too, so I don't have to make such a big stockpile. Good to know. Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear if, if you guys are excited about this or if you have any questions or comments or, you know, anything. Let me know. I will reply to anything that seems like it's looking for a reply. And uh, as always, if you're logged in and you like this and you like uh, you think other people would be interested in seeing this game or just uh, listening to my golden voice, haha, 
uh, give it a like because that's basically determines on whether things show up in, or you know how things show up in search results and stuff like that. So if someone searches for Clockwork Empires, more likes my videos have and views and all that kind of stuff as well. But you know the likes is one of the big things. Um, the better chance is that someone will be able to find uh, this and not some you know a hole that put up like a two second video and it's some spam for something else. You know whatever. So thanks again for watching. I am so disappointed that no one's going to drink this beer. Um, but hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. And that is it for this video. So thanks for watching, folks. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.